good evening, KU. My name is Caitlin. Today we are we are fortunate to have Anna actually zooming in with us from St. St. Louis. How are you, Anna? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for letting me join today virtually. Yeah, yeah, of course. What are you up to there? Um, I actually decided to come. I'm getting paid to dog sit my family's dogs while they're visiting a college. And so I figured it was a good opportunity to get out, especially since we don't really have a spring break. Um, I left Friday and I'll be coming back tomorrow. So it was a nice, nice little break. It's been yeah. um, really difficult not having a spring break. How are you dealing with it? Honestly, yeah, it's been definitely difficult. Doing 14 weeks straight is a little bit tricky, especially with school. I mean, it's been so constant lately. And some of my uh, professors are actually kind of treating this week as like a spring break. So I'm kind of fortunate enough for that, but I know that not everybody can say the same. <laughs> I know it's definitely really um, stressful. So I'm thankful to be here and get away from Lawrence for just a few days, but um, yeah. <laughs> Right. Honestly, any any break counts, and we're actually gonna gonna have you back here to do a live uh, report of St. St. Louis's weather. So, um, uh, so after that, after the break, we'll be back. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. From adversity, we rose. We made history and became pioneers, voyagers, champions, champions. And when our chant rises, haunting and hallowed, Jayhawks are telling the world what's near. Victory. Welcome back. I'm Nancy. And I'm Caroline. This is your Monday Good Evening KU News Update. More than 1,000 spring break tourists have been arrested in Miami Beach after the mayor declared a state of emergency and set an 8 p.m. curfew. Police fired pepper balls after hundreds of mostly maskless people were seen in the streets well after the curfew with sights of brawls and gunplay. During a 2019 Democratic presidential primary debate, President Biden argued for a more open asylum policy telling people fleeing oppression to come. But now the president has shifted and is telling migrants that they should stay in their home countries as the border crisis surges. After being permanently suspended from Twitter and other social platforms, former President Donald Trump plans to come back to social media with his own network. He says that this new platform will attract tens of millions of new users and completely redefine the game. Heavy rains and major flooding continue to overwhelm Australia's New South Wales. With roads, trees, and houses completely submerged in floodwaters, more than 18,000 people have been forced to evacuate their homes. Nearly one in four people in the U.S. have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine as eligibility continues to open up to more and more groups of people. Arizona and West Virginia will be opening their vaccine eligibility to everyone over the age of 16 this week. KU plans to stop requiring incoming freshmen to take a standardized test in order to be admitted. This will allow any student with a 3.25 high school GPA to be admitted without taking the ACT or the SAT. And that's it for our news update. Now over to Caitlin with sports. Thanks. Thanks, Caroline. Former KU football defensive coordinator Bill Young passed away last week at the age of 74. Young coached the, the Jayhawk defense for six seasons, including the Orange Bowl season of two 2007. One of the players whom Young mentored was Daryl Stuckey, who just last week was named Director of Foot Football Relations. Stuckey played on the Orange Bowl champion squad as well as seven seasons with the San Diego Chargers. And speaking of football, the, the Jayhawks will begin spring ball on March 30th with the spring game set for May 1st at David Booth Kansas Memorial Stadium. KU won its first round game over Eastern Washington by nine points, but until the first time, time out, the, the Jayhawks found themselves trailing by nine. After the 93-84 victory, Coach Self was quick to point out a possible reason for, for that slow start. It was the coldest arena I think I've ever been in starting the game. Uh, uh, I didn't feel it that way at the end. I thought it warmed up some, but I mean, it was literally 60, 58 degrees when the game started, it felt like. And, and, and uh, you know, we've been a team that's been a really hot, hot starting team or a, a, a really cold starting team. And, you know, you get down nine to nothing, and, and now the, the collar gets a little tighter, uh, uh, all these things. And, and fortunately for us, we were in real trouble if it wasn't for Dewan. Dewan came in and kind of sparked us. And After the timeout, freshman guard Dejon Harris and junior center David McCormick help, helped the Jayhawks fight their way back into the game. McCormick was, was the team's X factor after missing two weeks of practice under COVID protocols. Coach Self said he was, he was able to play more, more minutes than expected because the NCAA tournament is different from, from the regular season. 
But but it's a little bit different the NCAA tournament. I'm sure if you watch it on TV, you don't know notice this. You could if you're playing if you get a timeout five timeouts in the first half and five timeouts in the second half, it's hard to get tired. So you are setting so long, and all the timeouts are a minimum of three minutes. Isn't that right, Chris? I mean, I mean, so, you know, people talk about subbing around timeouts and things like that. I mean, if you can get to a timeout, you're going to be 100% by the time that the, 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 the timeout's over because there's so much rest. So I think, I think uh, Sam, if it was a regular season game, I don't think he could have played as many minutes. Another big, big factor down the stretch was the ability of senior Marcus Garrett to play smart after getting in foul trouble. Uh, no, nah, I wasn't worried. Um, I kind of know how to play without fouling and without gambling, without reaching, just putting myself in good situations where I don't have to foul. So I kind of wasn't worried at all. You know, of course he says that now that he didn't foul <laughs> the, the rest of the game. But uh, I, I, I didn't feel great about it. But I thought once we got to about the, the 13 or 14 minute mark of the second half, I felt better because I, I, th I thought he could manage it the rest of the way in. Senior Manon Manning placed 20th at the NCAA Swimming and Diving Championships this, this weekend in North Carolina. Manning finished the 100-yard back, backstroke in 52.61 and just missed qualifying for the, for the finals. The volleyball team made it five in a, in a row with a home-and-home -home sweep of Wichita State. Freshman Caroline Crawford, who was just named Big, Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week, finished Saturday's match with 18 kills on just 23 attacks. KU is now 10-10 and, and, and the season and will host Arkansas State on both April 2nd and 3rd. The, the soccer team moved up to number 22 in the, in the rankings before a 1-1 a draw against Iowa State on Saturday in Ames. Goal, goalkeeper Sarah Peters saved a potential game-winning game goal in the final seconds of, of regulation. The, the Jayhawks return to Rock Chalk Park next, next weekend to host Notre Dame on Sunday at 11.30 a.m. The track and field team sent a small contingent to Missouri this weekend and came home with 13 gold medals. KU ended the meet with, with victories in both the men's and women's 4x400-meter relays. The, the squad will split up again next weekend with athletes com competing in both the Texas Relays and the Oral Roberts Invitational. The, the baseball and softball teams are both on a, on a roll. Playing at home for the first time this season, the, the baseball team swept Creighton to raise their record to 12-6, and six, while the softball team went 5-0 and zero in the Jayhawk Invitational with wins over Tulsa, North, North Dakota State, and South Dakota. Baseball will, will hit the road with a pair of games against Lafayette before opening Big, Big 12 Conference play at, at West Virginia. The, the softball team will host Ar Arkansas on Wednesday, followed by a three-game series against Oklahoma State over the weekend. And that's it for sports, and, and we'll be back after the break. Thank you. Hi, this is Bill Self with some straight talk about opioid abuse. We're all taught to share, but giving someone your pain medication isn't generous, it's reckless. Yet one in five people prescribed an opioid admit to sharing it. These drugs can be dangerous, even deadly. If you're asked to share, say no. Help prevent opioid abuse among your friends and family before it starts. Learn more about safe storage and disposal at itmattersks.org. Diversity. What is diversity? It can be an umbrella term for a variety of things, ranging from diversity among different people, places, cultures, and ideas, to the way people express themselves and the way they interact with the world. In today's world, people interact with one another and share their thoughts through social media. Let's take Twitter, for example. How are people of different backgrounds, ethnicities, and sexual orientations with different political beliefs, interests, and job titles using this platform differently? Currently, celebrities are interacting with their fans on Twitter by speaking their minds, sharing their beliefs, and supporting social issues. Professional sports figures and organizations in the United States are using Twitter to support social causes and bring attention to current social matters, such as encouraging their fans to vote. Users are voicing their opinions about current issues surrounding racial inequalities, social injustice, and police brutality in the United States. There's diversity in the way people are discussing the upcoming presidential election, especially regarding their opinions of each candidate. Different news outlets are not only highlighting stories in the U.S., but are talking about important stories from around the world. But many Twitter users don't post about controversial matters or social issues at all. Rather, they use their platform to create memes and post funny content for entertainment. 
While many topics going around this app involve social issues and political opinions, Twitter creates a space where people can pull together collections of diverse thoughts, comments, opinions, goals, and even a little humor too. So how can we use this platform to express our differences? More importantly, how can we use it to learn from each other's differences today? Welcome back. My name is Julia, and I'm here with a special guest, Madeline Weinheimer, who is the president of Her Campus KU. Madeline, will you tell us a little bit about Her Campus KU? For sure, and thank you so much for having me. It is an honor to be here. I'm really happy to be back in the J School. And a little bit about me, I am the president of Her Campus KU, like Julia said. I am a student at KU. I'm a double major in journalism and English, and I minor in art history, and I'm about to graduate in May. So this is my last semester. I'm wrapping up everything, and again, very happy to be here right now. But a little bit about um, Her Campus, what we do is a media organization. We want to promote female voices in the media. So right now we're an online magazine, but we also have Instagram, Spotify, Pinterest, Twitter, you name it. We really want to get female voices out there, and we started out, again, mostly as a writing organization. So it's a magazine. We have online articles and we just really work to promote and sponsor and have a place for women to write right now in the media so yeah which I think is so important Thank especially you. with everything going on we just always want to make sure that the women voice isn't being silenced any more than absolutely it, it has been so I've been a part of her campus for two years now um, how long have you been in her campus that's a great question I've been in her campus four years all four years when I started at her campus there was six members right now today we have about 70 to 80 members so it has grown so much in my four years and i mean that's attributed to social media growth and growth on campus and another thing about her campus that i really like is networking and i'm not a part mm -hmm. of any sorties or other clubs that sort of thing so i have made all of my friends through her campus it's a great place to network and post college as well right now i'm on the job search and that is something else for sure but yeah. her campus mm -hmm. really takes care of their own and i'm actually looking at an editing job in new york for her campus so they have lots of um, post-career jobs as well through nationals so her campus is primarily an online magazine but mm -hmm. can people who aren't that interested in writing also join her campus and get something out of it absolutely we have more than just writing we have a social media team and we have an events team and of course if you move up you can join the exec team and oversee one of these teams as well but through social media you will be working on promoting posts planning a calendar uh, taking pictures anything like that you take care of twitter spotify anything on social media, writing, of course, you are publishing your articles, you are editing your articles, you're coming up with pictures. And then for events, we have events about once a month, whether that be something um, in person or online for, through Zoom. And the events team really just kind of wants to connect people. We want to bring together the members. You know, we're, we meet virtually, so it's nice to see each other in person sometimes. Yeah, definitely. So I know that Her Campus is, has its set staff right now, but mm -hmm. how could someone join Her Campus next semester if they're interested? For sure. We take new member applications every fall and spring semester at the beginning. You can find that either on our website at hercampusku.com or you can find it our Instagram is mostly where we communicate. So that would be hercampusku is on Instagram. You can find the member applications there. Super easy. We do not deny anyone. We just want to get a head count of everyone. So just tell us why you're interested, how you heard about us, what year you are, that sort of thing. And we would love to have you in the fall. I will not be here again. I will be graduating, <laughs> but the next president will be amazing. And I'm so excited to see where this organization continues to go. And I know that it will grow at KU for sure. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for being here. Is thank there you. anything else you'd like to add and let people know about Her Campus? Absolutely. Just again, follow us on social media. Instagram is Her Campus KU. Twitter, Her Campus KU. Spotify is Her Campus Playlist. And let's see what else. Pinterest. You can follow us on Pinterest, Her Campus KU. Mm -hmm. Pinterest is a definitely fun media organization that we have right yeah. now. It's um, pinning, like, I don't know, articles, that sort of thing. So definitely mm -hmm. look for us on Pinterest. But yeah, that's where you can find us and look for us around campus, too. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Julia. And um, Anna will be back with the weather once we come back from our break. In America, littering is becoming a bigger and bigger problem. In the U.S. alone, 250 million pieces of trash are littered each year, costing $11.5 billion in cleanup. Of that number, 40% of the trash comes from motorists on highways. We are slowly destroying our natural resources by littering so much as a society. Next time you see trash on the ground, do your part and throw it away. 
Hi, welcome back for today's weather update. Although I'm in St. Louis, I figured it'd only be fitting to do Lawrence's weather. So if we take a look right now outside, it is mostly sunny, but the clouds are starting to come in as we are going to see lots of precipitation move into the area of Lawrence. Tonight, it will be mostly cloudy with a low of about 48 degrees and the showers will continue. The area of Lawrence is supposed to be supposed to see about a sixth of an inch of rain. So that is a lot of precipitation that we are going to see over the next 24 hours. Now taking a look at tomorrow's forecast, we'll see a high of 57 degrees and the showers will continue throughout the day. Not seeing much of the sun, but we will see a lot of clouds and rain once again. Now taking a look at the rest of the week, we'll stay um, rainy and cloudy the next couple of days and as we move to the middle of the week we'll be mostly cloudy before we start to see the sun at the end of the week. That's all I have for today's weather forecast for Lawrence. Make sure to stay tuned for take, KU's Take a Side tomorrow at 9 a.m.